Hello everyone, this is Mike Fauché, and in today's video we're going to cover the new Unify 7 Pro Max Wi-Fi 7 access point from Ubiquiti. We're going to cover the features, the performance, my impressions, and of course the hardware itself. If you want to find out more about this access point, stick around and watch the rest of this video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help promote the channel. Having upgraded to the U7 Pro when it first came out, I've been kind of impressed with the extra performance. When Ubiquiti released the Unify U7 Pro Max, it had a couple of features that I was interested in, as well as wanting to have all of my indoor access points be Wi-Fi 7. Even though presently there are very limited clients that really take full advantage of Wi-Fi 7, in my earlier testing of the U7 Pro, there was still a slight increase in performance. The way my house is laid out, I have two access points on the inside, the U7 Pro, and the second one will be the U7 Pro Max, and I have two outside points, a U6 and a U6 Lite. Let's go through what comes in the box as well as the specs and then adopt it. You get the template to help you mark the holes, which also comes with a built-in leveler. The ceiling plate and the back plate for ceiling and ceiling tile mounting, and the hardware. One nice benefit of Unify Access Points is that most of them use the same mounting hardware, so upgrading or changing them out is incredibly simple. Since I was replacing the U6 Enterprise, looking at them side by side, you can see that the U7 Pro is actually smaller than the U6 Enterprise version. Despite using the same mounting hardware, looking at the back of the unit, they're very different. Both have a 2.5 gigabit PoE RJ45 connector to take advantage of the bandwidth of the 6 GHz spectrum, but the U7 Pro Max has a larger opening with a slot running across the top which is actually designed to allow the built-in fan to exhaust the device. In case you're wondering though, I haven't been able to hear this fan and the device is absolutely silent. To power both devices, I use my PoE Enterprise 8 port PoE Plus switch, which supports 8 ports of PoE at 2.5 gigabits per second, plus two 10 gig SFP Plus ports, so the devices should be able to run without any bandwidth restrictions. Now that we've covered the hardware, let's adopt it and talk about some of the unique features that set it apart, and then run some tests to see how it performs. Like any other Unify device, the setup is a breeze. Shortly after plugging in the device, it's recognized. Simply just click the link to adopt it to your network. It'll go through and update the firmware on the device if it's not currently at the latest version. And when it's done, it'll appear in the list of your Unified devices waiting to be assigned. To better establish how I'm going to test it, I created a dedicated Wi-Fi network for both the U6E and the Wi-Fi 7 access points in order to better isolate the traffic and not be hindered by congestion. I also ran the test at the outer edge of my house since my APs are centrally located in my hallway in order to establish a realistic use case. In this first test, I used my Mac laptop, which only supports Wi-Fi 6. As you can see from the results, they're almost the same, with only a marginal gain when attached to the Wi-Fi 7 access point. Remember that Wi-Fi 6 does not use the 6 GHz channel, as that is only used in Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7. So the bandwidth is going to be limited to the 5 GHz. That said, you might see slightly different results with a Wi-Fi 7 access point, as it's more efficient when there are many clients, so your mileage may vary depending on your environment and the devices. The next tests are using Wi-Fi 7 capable clients. As you can see from the results, things change quite a bit when you add Wi-Fi 7 clients to the equation, where features are fully exploited and you can flex the speed of the client devices. As you can see, there's almost a 2 by performance gain when you're using Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6E from these benchmarks. Remember that Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 both use 6 GHz channels but only Wi-Fi 7 supports a wider 320 MHz channel width. Next, let's quickly go through some of the unique features found on the U7 Pro Max and talk about the key differences between the U7 Pro and the U7 Pro Max. The main feature is a dedicated spectral scanning engine to help you address interference, especially in large-scale environments. In my environment, I have two indoor access points, one in the garage and one outdoor. However, many of my neighbors have multiple access points which can also interfere with achieving maximum performance. Looking at the analysis here, we can see that there's a lot of overlap and potential interference. 
I'm using the 5 gigahertz channel as an example. This new feature not only shows you what's going on, but what's happened in the past 60 seconds, so that you can get a trend. To resolve it, I changed the channel width and the channel number to avoid these conflicts, and now you can see the congestion problems are mostly gone. Other differences between the two models is that the U7 Pro can handle 200 more devices, has two additional spatial streams, which can improve multiplexing, and has 4x4 MIMO compared to the 2x2 MIMO on the U7 Pro, which theoretically can double your throughput under heavy use. Both the U7 and the U7 Pro Max will be getting MLO in a future upgrade. MLO stands for Multi-Link Operation, which is a key feature of, of Wi-Fi 7. It allows devices to simultaneously send and receive data across multiple frequency bands and channels, which increases the capacity and the throughput. This should be added via a firmware update in the near future. So what do I think of the U7 Pro Max? Overall, I've been really pleased with its performance. If you have a U7 Pro, I don't think it's worth the upgrade, unless you're in a heavily congested environment. However, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 access point, it's definitely worth considering going to the U7 Pro Max, despite the fact that there aren't too many clients and devices that currently support the Wi-Fi 7 standard. That's obviously going to change in the future, so upgrading your Wi-Fi and adding the Wi-Fi 7 Pro Max makes some sense as you add new devices that will most likely support Wi-Fi 7. If you're in the UniFi ecosystem and you need to update or add another access point, I would definitely consider the U7 Pro Max for at least one of your access points, which is the approach I took. Teamed with the current U7, I've been ha really happy with the results and it's ready for the future. Anyway, that's about it for today's video and I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.